In this video, I want to talk about how to write a null and alternative hypotheses for a hypothesis test. So here's just a general null and alternative hypotheses set, and it's made up of four different parts. The first part is just called the hypothesis labels. And the way that you pronounce this H sub zero is H naught. Okay, that's how you say it, H naught. Um, the H with an alternative or with the A stands for the alternative hypothesis. So then we come to this part right here. And the P in this case stands for your uh, parameter symbol. Now I want to make note that the P in this case stands for a population proportion. Sometimes you're going to be using, or the most, the other most common symbol that you would use for your parameter would be this symbol right here, which is mu, which stands for population mean. But in this case I'm using P for population uh, proportion. The next part, this K, could be any value. Um, it could be a, uh, any, for proportions, it would be any value between zero and one, but this could be any value if you're dealing with means, and that's just the value that's being tested. And then finally, the symbols that you have in between give you the direction of the test. So it tells you what type of a test it is and what direction, it, what direction the test is, is going to take. Um, for example, this one right here would be a two, let me use a different color, this would be a two-tailed test. And I'll speak in just a couple of minutes here about the other types of tests, but this would be a two-tailed test. So those are the different parts of your null and alternative hypotheses, and this is a hypothesis set. So let's now talk about what, the, what I was just talking about, the type or the direction of the test. Um, again, the P's in this case for the parameter stands for population proportions, but they could be mu's to stand for uh, population mean as well. But I want to focus on the symbols that we have here. Whenever you have an alternative hypothesis that has a not equal to sign in it, that is going to be a two-tailed test. And I'll do an, if you watch some of my other videos, you'll see how to conduct a two-tailed test. But if you have a symbol right here where in the alternative it says that the proportion is less than some value, this is going to be not a two-tailed test, but this would be a left-tailed test. And then finally, if you have this symbol right here, P is greater than some value K, that is going to be a right-tailed test. And if you continue to watch this video, you'll see how these fit together when you write these and, and how they all come together. But this is a two-tailed test. The less than symbol leads to a left-tailed test and the, the greater than symbol is the right-tailed test. All right, so now we go to the parameter that's being tested. Okay, this is where, uh, I talked about this just a few minutes ago, about how you could use a P for population parameter, or you could use mu for a population mean. So this is just an example over on the, on the right-hand side here. This is just an example of what it would look like, what it would look like to have a null and alternative hypotheses with, uh, for a mean instead of for a proportion. So just... I wanted to, to show that comparison. All right, I want to go ahead and work through an example of how to write a null and alternative hypothesis for testing for a proportion. Now, this is going to be a full-blown question, but I'm just going to focus on in this video on how to write your null and alternative. So here we go. It says a union spokesperson, sa spokesperson says that 75% of, of union members will support a strike if their basic demands are not met. A company negotiator believes the true percentage is lower and runs a hypothesis test at the 10% significance level. What is the conclusion if 87% out of a simple random sample of 125 union members say they will strike? Well, again, I'm just focusing on I'm just focusing on how to write the null and the alternative. So the first thing that I want to notice here is I'm dealing with a percentage. And because I'm dealing with a percentage, that leads me to um, a, a hypothesis test for a proportion. It doesn't say anything about means, so I know this is going to be a proportion. So if I start to write my null and alternative hypotheses, I'm going to start with my, my labels. I know I'm going to have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. And now I can see that I'm going to be working with proportions. So I'm going to put a P in here to represent my population proportion. 
the symbol in the null hypothesis is always going to be an equal sign. It's just always going to be an equal sign no matter what. So you can go ahead and put it in there. So now what I need to decide, going back to my examples from before, is it going to be a not equal sign, which leads to a two-tailed test in my alternative, a less than symbol, or a greater than symbol in my alternative hypothesis? Which one is it going to be? Well, reading through the example again, um, I want to look right about here. It says a company negotiator believes the true percentage is lower and runs a hypothesis test. So that is lower is going to lead me to put a less than symbol in my alternative hypothesis. Okay, this negotiator believes that the proportion is less than or lower than what the spokesperson is saying. So the number that goes right here is 0.75. And you notice, one, one thing that I want to make sure of is that the number in the null hypothesis always has to match the number in the alternative hypothesis. So this right here in the null basically says that we originally are saying that the proportion is equal to 75%. The alternative is saying that the negotiator believes that the proportion is less than 75% or 0.75. So there's that example. Let's do one more example that deals with means. Take a look at this one here. It says a local chamber of commerce says that the mean sale price for the homes in a city is $90,000. Now I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to highlight the word mean. As soon as I see mean, I know I'm going to be dealing with a hypothesis test for means and I can go ahead and start to right my null and alternative hypotheses so i'm going to start with my symbols null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis i know this is going to be a mean so i'm going to write the symbol for me population mean which is mu i know that my null hypothesis always has an equal sign in it so now i just need to figure out what is going to be the symbol right here in my alternative now i also want to point out that it says a local chamber of commerce says that the mean sale price in homes in a city is ninety thousand dollars so the value that's going to be tested is $90,000. As I continue here, it says a real estate salesperson notes eight recent sales of 75,000, 102,000, 82,000, 87,000, 77,000, 93,000, 98,000, and 68,000. So how strong is the evidence to reject the Chamber of Commerce statement? Well, I don't have anything in my example here that tells me that somebody believes that it's less than 90,000 or greater than 90,000. So since there's no directionality, less than or greater than, my alternative hypothesis is just going to say not equal to 90,000. If there's nothing in the problem that leads me to think that the alternative should be less than something or greater than something, then I just use not equal to, and this would be a two-tailed test. So hopefully this has helped you a little bit to understand how to write null and alternative hypotheses, and hopefully you will be able to use this for your stats class. Have fun in your stats class.